Hey y'all, this is Karen with Renovated Faith, and this week on the blog, I'm showing you how to install cabinet hardware. Uh, it's so important to install your handles and knobs uh, accurately because if one side of the handle is even just a little bit off, it's gonna be obvious. But fortunately, I have some tips and an amazing cabinet hardware jig that are going to help you to install all your cabinet hardware perfectly and painlessly. As you can see in the video, I highly recommend that you drill your hardware holes before you prime and paint your cabinets. Mistakes happen, but if you make a mistake drilling a hole in the wrong location, it's so much easier to fill it before you paint. However, if you are finding this tutorial and you have already painted your cabinets, no worries, you're in the right place and everything still applies. For this tutorial, we will be using a cabinet hardware jig, and I highly recommend this aluminum jig here. You can get it in the link below, and you will just assemble it as shown here. Be sure to check out the blog post at renovatedfaith.com for more tips on your cabinet hardware placement. For the most part, on your upper cabinet hardware, the bottom edge of your hardware needs to line up with the top edge of the bottom molding. And then the same thing on the bottom cabinets. The top edge of the hardware needs to line up with the bottom edge of the top molding on the cabinet doors. To set up your jig, make sure the bottom section is set exactly to zero. Now lay the jig on a flat surface and measure the length of a handle and divide that length by two. That's going to be your center point of where the handle is going to be. Say if my handle is six inches, then I'll measure three inches from zero on both sides so that those blue sides will be set at exactly three inches from the center. Now you can tighten the two blue slides on each side with the dials underneath. I had a center knob to work from, so I put my awl through the old hole and jig to keep the jig in place while I set the vertical slide to the top edge of the drawer. Once you set it to the right height, tighten it first with the dial and then with the small Allen wrench that comes with the jig. Now hold the jig in place flush with the drawer or door while you mark the first hole with your awl. Then mark the second hole with your awl, just making an indention in the wood where the hole is going to be drilled. Once I've made the two indentions, I'll take the jig off the drawer and drill two holes with a 3 16th drill bit. Always drill from the front of the drawer to the back. Then I will place the hardware on the drawer temporarily and check it with a torpedo level. We want to verify that the holes on the first drawer are perfect because this is how the jig is adjusted for all the holes going forward. Also, when drilling your actual holes, notice that I am leaving the fronts of the drawers attached. This is because I want the holes in the drawer fronts and actual drawers to line up perfectly. Drilling the hole for both simultaneously is the best way to do that. Once you've drilled all the holes for the drawers, reset your jig with some tips on my website at renovatedfaith.com for all the left-sided doors then drill all those holes, then reset your jig for all the right doors and drill those holes. The next step is to remove all your cabinet doors and drawer fronts, but first make a diagram of your cabinets. It doesn't have to be perfect, just have some sort of record of the location of the doors and drawers. On your diagram, assign all the cabinet doors and drawers a number. Write that number on the back of your drawer fronts with an arrow showing which way is up. And be sure to visit the blog post for my best tip on how to label cabinet doors. Now that you have removed all the drawer fronts and doors from your cabinet bases, you can, can fill the old holes with wood filler. 
Apply a liberal amount of wood filler over the old hole. With a scraping motion, push the filler in the hole and flatten it. Be sure to leave a thick enough layer of wood filler so that if the wood filler shrinks a little bit, as it dries, it won't leave a little divot or hole where the old hole used to be. Allowing there to be extra wood filler will help account for this so that when you sand it, it'll be nice and smooth. A quick tip is to put a baggie or piece of wax paper on top of your wood filler to keep it from drying up on you. Let the wood filler dry for at least a few hours or even better overnight. Use your sander with a 120 or 180 sanding pad and very lightly go over the surface of the dried wood filler. As you sand, check with your other hand to see how smooth the surface is. You are doing this to make sure you haven't sanded too much as you go. Sanding too much leaves a little divot in the hole and it will show through the paint after you've painted your cabinets. Now it's time for you to prep, prime, and paint your cabinets. Be sure to go to renovatedfaith.com for a step-by-step -step tutorial of everything you need to know to get a professional finish on your kitchen cabinets. I also have a free checklist for you to download. The last step is to reinstall the hardware. This will go so much faster since you already drilled your holes in the beginning. If paint has partially filled the hole, simply push it back through the hole with the screw. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Be sure to go to renovatedfaith.com to get the full tutorial and a free downloadable checklist for your whole cabinet painting process.